All right, let's go to, uh, let me just reiterate a couple of things about protecting fans and make sure also that the second half of it looks good, right? Yeah. So, uh, in protecting fans, one of the first things you're doing is you're doing a heel palm parry, not a standard inward parry, a heel palm parry with your left arm, right? You're on the inside of a left jab. First of all, let's remind ourselves, can you come over here for a moment? That the attack is a boxing attack, all right? So I'm gonna actually do it to you for a moment. Yes. All right, so let's have your left side forward. No, be in a fighting stance oh. with your left side forward, right? So the idea is to move back a little bit, move back. Right? The idea is that the jab is to get you in, and then the punch is to basically knock you out, right? That's a typical boxing attack. It also happens in point fighting, right? A lot of people will do that more with the leg, right? But it's very common that you have one motion, one, you know, like a hand motion, to just move your body forward. Because like we talked about before, if I start with my legs, you're gonna pick up on that and you're gonna move away. So move away from me, from me when I come at you. Uh -huh, that's what's gonna happen, right? If you go like, oh, and, you know, that's why a lot of people realize in a street fight, kicks, offensive kicks are difficult to make work. Defensive kicks work pretty well. But an offensive kick, if a guy always sees it coming, he's out of range, right? Um, and even in a point fight, that usually happens to us, right? It's even more difficult in the street fight. Right? Um, so if I have something that pulls me in, that's different, right? So that's why I don't start with my leg, I start with my hand. So a good boxer is going to use that, that jab you to get to cover the distance, right? And of course, to keep you occupied and also check that front arm a little bit, right? Um, but the point is, I just, my knockout, my attempt at a knockout, instead of being done from here, from this far away, where you will move along with it, right? My attempt of a knockout would really be cool if we could start here, huh? <laughs> right? So good luck now, right? So um, that's what's going on in the attack. So um, protecting fans is against a boxing attack, attack, which means it's a jab with the front arm to do what it is talked about, and a rear cross, which is just a rear hand punch. So it's going to be one, and bam, and then a knockout. So the first thing that happens is my hand gets me forward. Notice the rhythm of my hand to my body. Bam, bam, and then come in. That's hard for people to do, but it's an excellent drill, even for Kempo people, because it teaches you not to telegraph, right? That's what's going on in the technique. That's what the technique is against. So yes, you're doing the jab now, right? You come at me, boom, right? Well, you're actually coming and try to reach me with that first hand a little bit better, right? So I'm going one, and then notice what happened right here. I'm already in a pretty good position. So do that a little bit slower right there, right? It's a front hand jab, so you have to start in the left fighting stance, right? Move back a little bit, right? So we're in an even stance, left to left. Or right to right. Right now it's left to left. As you jab, I'm going to go here. And I'm accomplishing several things with this first move. I'm accomplishing three things. Number one, heel palm parry gets me, gets actually, you know, if this has more force on it, it gets me out of the way. And it also creates somewhat of a barrier right here. This barrier is enhanced by doing this. I can't wait with this because I don't know how fast the second punch is going to follow the first punch. I'm going to have to assume it's that rhythm. Right? You are only saving... Uh, the only saving characteristic is that that arm is starting a little further away, right? So as you go one, I'm already here, which means I, I parry the first move of my heel palm parry when I was still here, and I do several things here. One is just a cover, right? Go ahead and punch me in the head, right? Kind of hard, right? <laughs> so let's do it from the other side here. So he comes with the first arm, I'm here, and I'm already in position for the second block, right? So first I parried his, or blocked his front arm, then I created a cover with my hands, and I'm screening or limiting him. Meaning that um, it's the same idea as throw a punch at me, and I, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be doing an inward block. And the reason why I'm sure is because where my arm is starting, it's way over here. If I started in the middle, I wouldn't have that benefit. Now I gotta go, whoa, left or right, all right? So that's what I mean by screening, right? Can we go back a little bit? So, what I'm doing here, I want to make sure that everybody out of state can see me. Here you go. What I'm doing, if you look just at the right arm, as I'm still doing the heel palm parry, I'm positioning my right arm in preparation for this. All right? We talked about and will talk about more about what happens if he steps through with this and this gets jammed up. All right? Not that big of a deal. That's why we have, there's another technique against the jab cross combination in Kempo, and that's in Twine Maces. And I can just switch to that. So if you're going one and then stepping through, I'm right in entwined maces. That's really not that hard to do if you're ready for it. And on the rare occasion 
that he still gets his arm around. So do just the first the jab, right? And I'm here. And let's say you do a flailing roundhouse punch, which means you kind of have to step in with that, just like that, right? And that's what unfurling crane deals with. So if I started with protecting pants, I'm just now right in the unfurling crane right here. As he moves in, I can just step back. Or I can do that by pivoting just into a twist stance from here. If you're coming from there, I can just go right into a twist stance here. But we're not talking about unfolding crane right now. We're just talking about what's most likely to occur here. And that is that you're going to end up on the outside of that second punch. As long as you did this. So I have a combination. Do just the left, extend the left arm. Am I interested? Yeah. I have a combination of a parry, a cover, and a position block. It's really important. That's why this comes here on the first move. This is why this is not a, cannot be a one-two affair. This has to be one. The moment I'm doing the heel palm parry, I'm positioning my, my second block already. So if he comes at full velocity, one, two, it doesn't really matter all that much because I can match that with my hands. And that then gets enhanced with a kick to the groin, right? So if you go slow now, we got one, two, kick him in the groin and let him come right into this eye strike, right? That straightens him out, it prevents him from bending forward completely. And so now, bam, I can do my elbow strike right here. Right? That, and he probably moves back slightly. That gets followed with a back knuckle to the face, right, right here. Right? Then I come the other side of his face, I'm gonna hook this, as I'm hitting with a heel palm right here, right into that last motion right here. If you look at the last part, the rhythm of that, let's just say, oh, we did this, right, I'm doing this, I'm hooking to come back. This strikes, and my left palm gets my body in the right position. Just like an unfolding crane, where an unfolding crane, if you're here and here, this is this rotation, which is driven heavily by this palm, that gets my front scoop kick to happen because it turns me into this position. All right, so it's very similar right here. Wouldn't you know that one of the other techniques against the boxing attack has the same mass that he moves with the legs? Typical at Parker. All right? So I went one, two, and securing this. And I'm now getting ready for this heel palm, which then gets my back foot moving forward if I need it. But more importantly, it gets me into this position right here. What's this right here? All right, so all that ending part comes together really nice from here. And that's the ending of the technique. So, thank you. Great job, Mr. Sardinos. Give him a hand. <laughs> so, one, get this right hand up there right away. You're doing a heel palm parry, not a standard and wood parry. Heel palm parry, meaning your elbow comes up. Your hand torques. Your thumb is down at the end. This is a clockwise, from your view, a clockwise rotation of your forearm right here. As you go into basically a forward bow stance, but you're not going to be in a stance long. I have another video I did, I haven't even published it yet, about uh, checking the storm versus evading the storm to explain that stances are sometimes not for power at all, but simply to position the kick. Overhead attack, this right here, and checking the storm. Come from that side, people. Come from that side. My, my cat stance is not because I need a more stable stance, it simply positions my kick. That's why I'm doing a cat stance, for no other reason. All right, because if I had only stepped up to the side, I wouldn't have a good kick here. So I gotta get my hips in the right position for a good snap kick. Evading the storm, the forward bow stance also does not give me, is not there for stability at all. It is to position my right leg and my hips for the roundhouse kick. You got Bam, that's what it does. If I step into a forward bow stance, I'm already turned, and that's a very fast kick now. So remember, it's a kick to the groin, so it's not very high. So here in protecting fans, the same thing. Do the first, the jab. Remember, you're in a fighting stance. You're shuffling forward on that, right? So stepping into a forward bow stance is just so my kick is very fast. I don't need it for the stability. I'm not trying to prevent him from moving. I'm getting out of the way, right? So you go one, right? I don't, I'm not worried about how stable I am. I worry about can I do this block right here? And can I then kick him right in the groin as soon as I do? Does that make sense? Yes. 
So when we say forward bow stance, please don't make the mistake of making this a hard start and go and settle, and then you're not kicking. Right, as you're right from here, and then as soon as I know I got this block, I'm pulling you into the kick, then the ice leg, then the elbow, then the back knuckle, then bam, and that's All right, that's a really cool technique, actually. Mm -hmm. Very, very effective. So, back to the front again. Heel palm parry, as you go into a forward bow stance, as you have a cover with your arms, he can't even hit you in the face much anymore. All right, don't forget, a parry on the inside of your arm is almost never done, and it's never done. Could do that really quickly. Relax, just to make sure we very clear. When I first learned this technique, I know well, I can see, do that same punch again, right? I can see like in circles of protection or in uh, reversing maze, how a parry on the outside of the arm makes a lot of sense. I'm moving into the zone of sanctuary. I'm not gonna be hit with the second arm. Probably, eh? <laughs> right? But on the inside of the arm, to just do a regular parry seems like suicide. We, we don't do that because of the other arm. It's like, whoa, right? So that's why protecting pants has this converted into a heel pump parry so I can solve all those problems I just talked about. And it's your job to try to get around this cover. Right? And so that's a really good position to block that. Right? So let's just get that part. All right? Starting your fighting stance right now to make it simple because we have to do all this in sparring. Right? To do it from a feet together position robs you of the realism a little bit. That's how you first learn it, but that's not how you eventually, this is not how you would eventually then execute it. You gotta be able to do this from a fighting stance. Yes, sir. So one, accomplish all those things. Parry, and by the way, you should notice that if a really good heel palm parry with a torquing forearm moves you out of position faster. A little bit like evading the storm, except it's your front arm doing it other than instead of your rear arm, right? So one, and have your cover there, and you literally half the time have to wait for the guy to finally throw his punch because you only have to do this in relation to the punch. So heel palm parry, cover, and realize this is a position block. And as soon as he punches, you block his, you know, remember he's trying to you know, knock you out with a straight rear punch. Block on the outside, grab right away, pull him down diagonally past your right hip as you kick him right in the groin. And as you do that, help him right back up <laughs> with the ice strike. Right? That's why the kick is before the ice strike. That timing is, and again, Mr. Parker was very specific. If you read the 87 journals, he mentions that, he goes over that in the notes and themes that the kick is prior to the ice strike, all right? I'm not just making this up here, guys. One, now block, pull him into the kick, and now ice strike. Personally, I like to turn my hand out a little bit because it makes it easier for me to execute an accurate ice strike without having to look at this guy. If I already kicked him in the groin, right? I'm worried now about the next opponent. So again, one, execute the outward block right here that you should be falling right into. All right, pull this down past your hip as you kick him in the groin, eye strike. Then from there, just check down on his right arm, his front arm, and you're in a perfect position to do it. Right inward elbow, right here, right, right to his face, temple, nose, doesn't matter, but he comes right into it. Soon as you do that, back knuckle him, right? You hit him in the face once, twice, right? Bang, bang. Right? A lot of people here go into the moving the back foot up at the wrong moment. It's not time for that yet. You're in your neutral bow stance with your elbows, stay in that neutral bow stance for your back knuckle, hook, right afterwards, hook the face, basically the eyes, right? And now you start executing that left heel palm, which helps you get your body into a perfect position for the scoop kick, okay? One, which then just comes back. Does so that all make sense to you guys? Yes, sir. All right, that needs practice. So go ahead and work that a bunch of times. Yes, sir. Yes, homework. Yeah, we're kind of out of time, so <laughs> that's your homework, I guess. <laughs> we have the same rhythm and unfurling crane, but you're doing it uh, with the front arm instead of the. Well, you're still doing it with your arm. An unfurling crane, you would have come with a hammer fist to the groin and the elbow up the skewer elbow up to the chin, and then there's an outward palm claw, but that's not a major strike at all. That's the equivalent of our eye hook right here. It is that left heel palm, and that gets you to move your back foot up, and that, that gets you into the right position for the scoop kick. That's why those motions are in there. Most people think, wow, that is very hard. I gotta do this, and this, and this, and that. I gotta think of three things at the same time. And that, that's the wrong way of thinking about it. Ed Parker's temple movements are very natural. The way you think about it is if I do a rear hand palm strike, it turns my body forward. It squares off my hips. 
And if I get my standing leg under me at that moment, I got a natural front leg scoop kick or snap kick, right? But in this case, it's a snoop it's a snoop kick. <laughs> in this case, it's a scoop kick. So just think of that. That's from a neutral bow stance, do a rear hand palm, let that bring the back foot in a tad, and then just bring, bring your right foot up. That's the core of your motion right there. It's very simple, so those moves help each other. You're gonna quickly realize why that combination is like that, because it's easy. You can execute all that without looking. All right, so I definitely would do that. It's exactly the same thing in protecting fans. The only thing at the prior is, get, is secure my eye hook, but just and before I actually rip with this, this is my left palm, bam, hitting in, and that gets my body in position for that scoop kick. Yeah, let that rear hand initiate the action. That's the most important thing. Most people in, in, try to initiate with the step or the eye hook. You know, it is that palm strike that initiates it and gets everything into action. And so it's a piece of cake. All right, that's the natural part of this motion. And I'm going to help you to pull the right hand back at the same time to then drive the motion of your switch. Right? That's super easy. It's effortless. And again, I can do it without having to look about it. Okay, you know, That's it, right there. So if you just practice that, if you just practice the switch, okay, let me drive it with my rear hand and just make it a switch with a scoop kick built in. You're getting the essence of this technique. And you're going to get the rhythm and the timing of it like that because now it's natural. You're going to do what the body wants to do effortlessly. That's it, right there, you got it. Now you just gotta like do it you know five other times to make sure you don't forget it. <laughs> okay. All right everyone, line up. Yes, sir.